we're going to have to really think more broadly and more holistically about how we can really make an impact understanding the future of work and where we're going and the changes that are ahead for us. We are just excited and honored to have Dr. Carol Parker Walsh with us today, and she is going to be sharing some of the insights of what's going on in corporations that's creating opportunities for both career services providers as well as the employees that work at these corporations. So, Carol, thank you for joining us. You have such a long and wonderful history with the legal background and then doing some work in companies and working in academia. I just love this richness that you bring to our conversation. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah, so you're seeing... It's, listen, it's nice that all those years of schooling and work paid off, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, and you have seen inside corporations as a consultant, and now you work as a coach with leaders. And I know you're seeing, as we all are, this talk about employee engagement programs and diversity programs, but things are shifting a little bit. Tell us what you're seeing. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, and it's all because of the pandemic. It's interesting because we've been having, you know, those of us who've been in this space have been kind of shouting out, you know, from the valley <laughs> that like these things are coming and this is happening and that you have to relook at how you manage your career and and things of that nature. And, and employers were looking at the same thing, but of course the pandemic has accelerated everything. And so now as the dust even still continues to settle around um, a lot of the variations and in, in conversations around what the pandemic has caused. One of the things that he's, has emerged so powerfully is this idea of really having a human-centric approach, of really, really leaning into um, what's important for the employee, how are they managing themselves, the connection between their purpose and the organizational values, you know, so much has changed. And like, we've seen that. We've seen that the pandemic has caused on the employee side, right, this this desire to find meaning and value in what they do, which is why we had the great resignation. And even more so for women, which is why we're in the great breakup with so many women and female leaders leaving organizations because they're still looking for that alignment. And that's been something I've preached for a long time about career life alignment and understanding your career fits in the greater ecosystem of your life. It's not this isolated thing. And that's become um, no more true than now since we've gone through the pandemic. But employers are also seeing that and are wanting to create spaces that are allowing people as much as they possibly can. They're still figuring it out, too but wanting to engage employees in a much different way and, and really respecting and honoring their, their, their goals and you know their relationship with how they want to work and things of that nature. And it's so critical that we do that because just behind you know, the pandemic or really what I call the, the great realization, right? We had the great resignation and things of that nature. We also had the great regret. And to me, that is a sign of people making these moves, but without still doing the work to understand what are the right moves for them, right? Or looking for the organization to tell them what to do. And organizations right now are looking for employees to help guide them on their path. So gone are the days where you kind of show up and wait for a mentor or a sponsor or your manager to kind of direct your path. Now the employer is looking for you to be able to come in with a clearly defined career pathway, a clearly defined understanding of what your trajectory looks like and how they can help you, how they can partner with you to support you as opposed to you really just being at the whim of the organization. So things are really, really shifting, you know, quite a bit right now. Yeah, and we've been talking about people needing to take control of their career management for a long time. But for a while, it was like companies would kind of do it, but it was like, no, 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 that's on you, employee. That's your problem. And now companies are going, wait, 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 that's our problem too. Because if we want to do skills-based hiring and we want to have succession plans and we want any of that continuity and not the you know talent shortage, we're going to actually have to help people do this. So let's talk about the employee side for a second. As I said, we've been talking to individuals about needing to manage their careers for a long time. What tools do people need today to really be able to do that? Yeah, well, you know, em employers have said that by 20, 
30, that 94% of their employees are going to have to be reskilled or upskilled, right? And there are definitely a lot of new breakthroughs and technologies and things that are coming to bear that employees are going to have to understand. But, but one of the things that I think is really important that we can't undermine is that they're also saying that they understand that the human connection and having a human-centric approach is going to be so powerful to really solving problems, building teams, and really changing the dynamics. So it's, it's not just kind of the hard skills that we're used to. There's going to be a lot of focus around collaboration, influence, interpersonal communication, right? The ability to express yourself, right? Because you can have all the skills in the world, but if you can find a way to bring it into the workplace in a way that's going to influence, connect, and actually implement change, that's going to be problematic. In addition to the fact that you have to be you know, agile and flexible, right? You know, we live in a, in a VUCA environment right now, right? It's, you know, the, the, the terminology that was picked up, you know, by the military about being, you know, volatile, we're still in this volatile uncertainty, you know, time, ambiguous time. And so it's requiring people to have this, this nimbleness, this ability to be able to read the room and support where we're going and see futuristically with ability to craft a vision, knowing what's ahead, as opposed to just looking at what's in front of you. So the skill sets that employers are really looking for and wanting coupling with those hard skills that we tend to think about are some of these human-centric approaches to how they're working and how they're showing up, right? By by over 50% interpersonal skills and critical thinking skills were some of the top things that leaders have said that they're wanting their employees to be able to bring to the table in order to support them in this time of uncertainty and consistent, constant change. And we've got to figure out the hard skills we need to develop for tomorrow, what technologies we're going to have to be able to use and those soft skills. And you said, you know, dealing with ambiguity, dealing with change. Most people aren't great at that. I I think there's some stereotypes of older generations not being great at that. And so we have to understand that that's what we're looking at. And we need those skills. We need to be able to demonstrate those skills. And we need to be able to communicate that we have those skills in a way that has depth. All right. We're not talking about yeah. slapping interpersonal skills on your resume in a list. We're talking no. about really being able to demonstrate them. Yeah. And 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 the 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 misnomer, I think, for a lot of people, particularly older generations, is that they don't have these skills, that these are some skill sets that somehow or other they have to find and develop. And I am a huge com- proponent of understanding that you have those skills, you've utilized them in other areas of your life, but you need to learn how to translate and articulate them for the workplace and for where you are in the workplace. So first of all, it starts with really having the cellular level confidence in your abilities and what you do bring to the table, really digging deep and looking over the course of the past positions you've had, whether, and both in and outside of organizations, whether you volunteered or done some other things, there are ways to mine all of your experience so that you can hone in and see, like kind of remove the title, remove that, and really look at how you were implementing and carrying out tasks and roles. You probably were utilizing those skills and not even thinking that that's exactly what you were doing, right? So you have to really kind of go back and really dig deep and find those skills and abilities that and translate those into the things that you were doing before so that they make sense, right? You want to be able to create a career vision, right? You want to be able to see beyond where you're going. I did a talk in November and I remember someone in the audience were struggling with the fact that they wanted to step into leadership and they felt blocked and why isn't the organization seeing them as a leader? And I said that if you can't lead your own career, if you don't have a plan and a strategy and a vision for your own plan for your career development, why would an employer think that you can have a vision and plan and lead a team, right? So we can't just think about these things in silos and just in in pockets, but see them across the table and across the board to see how we can really leverage what's already there, kind of really dig in and mine that so that we can utilize that for the larger um, place in the organization. Wow, that's so powerful. And similarly, if we can't manage change within our own space, within our life, within our career, and as you said, that plan and vision, then we can't demonstrate it for right now. I mean, just as COVID is gone and we're not hearing about it as much, people are still dealing with a lot. And 
as you said, women maybe left the workforce. Now they're trying to come back, but in a different capacity because we've all yes. reconfigured how our life work balance is going to come together. Um, and so employees are still trying to figure that out too. We had quiet quitting. <laughs> And there's, uh, you know, just that, where is that line between being good in your career and, and showing up and living and how do we balance all of that, which is a challenge for most people? Yeah. And I, I think for me, the fundamental answer is you taking control, right? You being the CEO of your life and agenda. And I think for too long, many people feel they don't have a control that, you know, they have no say, they have to do whatever the employer says, but we're moving away from that. Employers are really looking for you to come to the table. I was working with a client the other day and she was frustrated because she had told her, her, her uh, manager that she wanted to promote it to leadership. And when a leadership opportunity arose, he said, here you go. But then she said, well, I don't want that leadership opportunity. And so he was like, but you said you wanted a leadership opportunity, but we're not being clear, right? As employees, we are not being clear. We're putting it out there, but we're not understanding and really articulating where we want to go and what we really want. So we're not looking at that trajectory, which from my perspective opens up a huge huge potential for career professionals to be able to support in that way. Because while employers understand that they need this 94% um, upscaling and, and, and um, development, right, they know that training and development is going to be critical. They're not necessarily funding T&D departments, right, or diversity departments to be able to answer the call. So there's, there's a, you know, kind of a dirt there that needs to be responded to. And I think that's the place where career professionals, if they're reading the signs and having vision for their own businesses and seeing what's happening can really begin to answer the call within those organizations. Yes. And that will move us into our next conversation, talking about what is going on in organizations. Are they cutting these programs? And what does that mean for the employees as well as what does that mean for consultants, career services providers, et cetera, who might be able to, to partner with companies to offer that opportunities? How they're not funding training and development and uh, the diversity program funding is kind of dwindling. And this is frustrating for those of us in this space, right? We see, hey, you have this huge need to help people upskill and to bring diverse people into your organizations. And yet we see this time and time again, every time there is a recession, those are the first positions eliminated. But there's mm -hmm. some hope that this time might be different. Tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about what you're seeing. Yeah, I think that um, what the conversation seems to be framed toward is that they're not putting the money toward it because they love to have organizations, smaller boutique organizations really come in and meet that need because they know they can customize something. They can do it very quick. They can do it in a very nimble fashion to be able to craft something that meets the need as opposed to just having someone on the payroll long-term that may or may not be able to really address the needs that they're looking for. So while some do have existing departments there, they are right now, organizations have said they are ready and willing to spend the money to bring organizations, small business owners, for example, in or career development specialists or consultants or coaches to really come in and meet the need, you know, for those who know and can articulate what the need is in the organization, who understands where we're going and be able to craft some levels of support for them that can really, really make a difference, right? Because organizations are saying that they need people, they want to create leadership skills that are universal and evergreen. So they want to create something that's called like deep capabilities. So it's really helping leaders to understand how they can not only um, show up as powerful leaders, but also help to drive the organization forward in an uncertain time. So, so remember, we're talking about both um, tooling and, and supporting the individual contributor, but also there's a big supporting space for helping leaders to really step into their leadership role and help lead the organizations greatly. So there's not a lot of skill building at that level because organizations are calling upon leaders to be able to do so much more than they were able to do before. They're calling on leaders to become coaches themselves. So how are they gaining the skill sets to understand how to really build a supportive coaching environment? Because studies show that when you have that type of environment, you're creating more psychological safety, 
you're embedding more authentic trust with an organization, and we know that drives innovation, right? We're looking to how can leaders really support the diversity uh, agenda. A lot of employers are getting it right and not just segregating diversity initiatives into one department, but seeing how they can infuse it throughout the everyday practice in organizations and having leaders be the one that spearheads that. So that means we're going to need inclusive leaders, you know, and having an understanding, again, that human-centric approach of how to build spaces of belonging and inclusion. So these these type of skills is what I was talking about from the human-centric approach that organizations are calling their leaders now to take up the charge in the areas that used to be exclusive in training and development or in diversity departments and are looking to leaders to be able to do that. And that's a prime place to come in and provide that level of support to leadership to be able to do that work, to be able to teach them how to foster that environment. And not just in everyday training, but in ongoing support on how they can embed these practices as a daily, everyday practice and not just a one-off training or things of that nature. I think employers have gotten wise that the one-off training doesn't work anymore and they need ongoing support in this area. Yeah, I love that. The partnering of training with coaching, and as you said, training the leaders to be coaches. And, you know, I know this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think it's really hard to be a leader right now, right? Leaders are people, they had the same struggles during COVID as everyone else. Now they're being asked to lead virtually. They're being asked to walk this weird line between hybrid and virtual and come back into the office or not. And um, Mm -hmm. as you said, they're also being called to lead inclusive organizations, which shouldn't be new, but it is for Mm -hmm. many of them. And so there's a lot of challenges, especially for those maybe more entry-level managers or mid-level managers who haven't been doing it long enough to pivot the skills they had into this new world of work. Yes, yes. And I think that is where a lot of the services that, you know, career professionals have been doing could really meet the need of that. You know, for example, you know, the the resume writer, the someone who has been really skilled in understanding how to pull out and translate skills and show value and uh, be able to interpret and tell the story of all of the brilliance that someone brings to the table to the employer could do a little bit more work, you know, connect going on maybe a long-term basis and really support a leader in not just being able to articulate it in a document, but actually embrace it and have it embedded in how they show up as a leader because they need that as well. In addition for the individual contributor and most employees who are there, like how do you on a day-to-day basis be able to show up in the beautiful work that a resume was giving? I think, I think just as employers and organizations are upscaling and retooling, I think for career professionals, the same thing needs to happen. We can't work in silos anymore, right? We have to maybe add some ability to understand what branding is and how to help people position their authority, not only in the workplace, but beyond, right? We have to, instead of doing maybe just... um, a branding document for one leader, maybe going in and and working with the suite of leaders and helping them understand not only how to brand themselves, but what is their branding message inside of the organization in terms of what they're doing and the impact that they're making, right? So there's so many ways in which we as career professionals could really upskill and reskill ourselves in order to really meet the needs that are out there so that we can have more ongoing connecting engagements with organizations and not just like one-offs, just like we talked about the training, the one-off training doesn't work anymore. And I really think in terms of the career engagement is not going to just be a one-off anymore. We're going to have to really think more broadly and more holistically about how we can really make an impact understanding the future of work and where we're going and the changes that are, are, are ahead for us. Yeah. And I talked to a recruiter, he was talking about how the they're bringing more coaching into the individual managers are supposed to not even just do coaching, but do career coaching for their their uh, their team. You know, what's next and where are they headed? And I don't know if you've seen Deloitte did this big outlay of what skills based hiring looks like. And it isn't just mm-hmm. about, you know, looking at the job and what are the skills and matching the person up to that when they're applying. But the skills based organizational ideal also looks at what are the skills that are needed and what who's on my team and how can I get them into the right seats, which I mean, that cliche has been around forever, 
But it's like now organizations are actually having to do it because of the mm-hmm. talent shortages, because of the cost to hire. All of that has just become so much more. And so they're actually putting that in place, even though we've been talking about it, I don't know, for probably 20 years, organizations have been talking about it, but now they have to do it and they don't Absolutely. have the resources. Absolutely. So can you imagine going into an organization since, you know, they're looking at how do we develop our talent and make sure they're in the right spaces? What a great opportunity that is to really go in and help individuals learn how to brand themselves so that it's easier for employers and leaders and organizations to know where to find the talent within so that they don't have to go without. Many times people are working on a completely different side of the campus of an organization and a leader doesn't know that they have talent right under their own nose. So how do we go in and help to be able to build that capacity for an organization so that they can tap into uh, the internal talent that's within? I think that's a huge need within organizations because too often they have worked in silos and they don't know what's there, particularly when it comes to inclusive leadership and understanding the diverse talent that they have in organizations and the women and women leaders they have in the organization. Because that too often is in silos. You don't realize somebody who's been working there for 10 years has the exact skill set that you need, but because your departments don't cross each other or don't have conversations with each other, you don't realize what's there. So so honestly, I think part uh, one big aspect of moving forward is going to be how do we help individual contributors and leaders understand not only the coaching process, but also the branding process and helping people to really step forth as authorities and leaders in the work that they're doing and really presenting those skill sets throughout the organization in ways that they haven't had access to before, right? So it's not just going to HR and saying, who do you got? But it's really leaders talking to each other because they have this pool of information that they can tap into to be able to get the support that they need. Yes, and I'm so excited. So Carol's going to join us during our Career Thought Leaders Symposium this March in San Diego. And we've had presentations in the past on how career services providers can do business with corporations, how they can come in as contractors. And we're going to dive deeper in this session. Carol's really going to give us the nuts and bolts. What does it look like to make this proposal? How do you develop those relationships so you can earn that business? And I'm excited Mm -hmm. for that because this is a big new door opening to career services providers, but there's always been a little door and you've been acting in that space brilliantly for so long that I'm just so thankful you're going to share this expertise with our group. So thank you for, for doing that. Oh, you are so welcome. I'm so excited to share it because there are, there are so many opportunities. And, you know, I really want to help us rethink, you know, for many of us, rethink how we're doing business, just like employers are. And just like we're asking the people that we're working with to rethink as well. It's time for us to really think deeper and broader about what we can bring to the table as well. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, if you're a career services provider or recruiter or someone who wants to get this this information of getting onto the corporate opportunities that are available for coaching and career service and providing, go to careerthoughtleaders.com. We've got our 2023 symposium information there. And uh, we'd love to to have you. We'd love to see you there. And Carol, where else can people find you if they're looking for following your information and the great work that you're doing? Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, I have a podcast called The Midlife Career Rebels. So if you're an individual, a leader, individual contributor looking to really amp up and step up in the work that you're doing in the place that you're at or looking to transition, that's a great place to, you know, catch me and get some resources. And it's The Midlife Career Rebel podcast. Um, And if you're on the corporate side and you're looking for that level of support to really come in and create some peer-to-peer connection and opportunity, those individual, you know, leadership development and creating deep capabilities, you can also find me at carolparkerwalsh.com slash corporate and learn everything that I could bring to the table for you there. Carol, thank you so much again for sharing your expertise. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. 